I've hit 100 subscribers. I started compiling a list of questions to make this video and I was at 98 subscribers and by the time I finished I was at 100 subscribers. So thank you all for that. And with that I told you guys I would do a Q&A video when I hit 100 subscribers. A bunch of you sent me a bunch of questions. So let's start answering your questions. Question number one from David O'Sullivan. What films that have never had a sequel would you really like a sequel to? Well, obviously, there's two that come to mind. The first of is, is, of course, Masters of the Universe. At the end, Skeletor popped up and said he'd be back. He hasn't been back yet. And the second one, of course, would be Super Mario Brothers. Daisy shows up at the... Uh, the princess shows up at the very end. And, I mean, she said there was going to be another adventure, and there wasn't. Well... Honestly, I, I, none come to mind. I've uh, thought about it a good bit. I actually went to go look at my Blu-ray collection, and, which isn't over there. I don't know why I'm pointing over there. But uh, nothing really came to mind. Uh, there's a lot of movies that in the moment I think, wouldn't it be great if there's a sequel to this? Wouldn't it be great? And then as time passes, you go, probably wouldn't be so great. That's probably not a great idea to make a sequel of whatever that is. And as time passes, you don't miss sequels like that that didn't happen. And what films that have had many sequels do you wish had only been one film. When I think about sequels that I wish didn't happen, generally I'm thinking about, does it make the previous film worse or does it take away from the previous film? So like, for example, uh, they came out with a fifth Die Hard movie a few years back and I just don't care. I mean, it's just like a non-issue to me. I still have the original Die Hard. I still got Die Hard with a Vengeance. They made a fifth one that's terrible. I just don't care. So I you know, it doesn't matter if they keep making more of those stories because it doesn't change the mythology. It doesn't make the previous films worse. However, the two that come to mind would be Alien 3. Uh, so Alien Aliens, great. I love Aliens. It's one of my favorite films of all time. Alien 3 comes along and the beginning of that movie, what happens in the first five minutes, takes away from the previous film. They stole something from the previous film, and I mean, I just can't forgive that. I, like, I, it's of all movies ever made, the one I hate the most is Alien Three, and they took something away from the previous film. So I just pretend as if that whole line of movies doesn't exist after Aliens in my mind. So the second one that comes to mind is the one that a lot of people will say, which is of course the Matrix movies. The first one just has this great mythology and builds up the storyline. And the sequels change the mythology and advance the mythology in ways that's only for the worse. Nothing about what they add in the other films makes it better. It's only for the worse. And so if you watch the first one, just stop because the next ones rob you of some of that joy from the first one. Do you have any comic book characters that have yet to make it to the big screen or have not been accurately represented? None really come to mind because we've, we're at a point in the world of... Um, superheroes on movies and television that the ones that are obvious that come to mind like that would make such a good movie they've done that the ones that they've done it and it's been bad it's usually because it's there's not a good way to do it so the one that comes to mind would be like the flash but i'm not like he's first off he is coming to the big screen second off, i'm not in a hurry to get him on the big screen because we've got a tv show i really like and so nothing really jumps out at me. What I would say is that I think that Batman is better suited for television than he is for movies, or at least for his ongoing standalone series. So if they made a Batman TV show that they're doing about 10 to 13 episodes per season, and it ties into the cinematic universe, it's not a disconnected thing, it's not part of the, uh, the CW stuff, like it's part of the those movies. So he shows up in Justice League. However, his stories day to day allow him to be the great detective, allow him to be this guy that's investigating sometimes street level crib criminals, the mob, and then these other kind of wacky characters like the Joker that aren't necessarily always trying to blow up the city. And so the problem with Batman movies when they become cinematic is that they always have to be, have so much spectacle to them, they have to have the explosions, the car chases, that that robs from the fact that he's the great detective. And so we haven't really gotten too much of that. They put a little tease out of it in the movies where he'll investigate one thing in the movie, but that's not the driving thing of the plot that he's brilliant. A TV show allows you to do that. Likewise, you can start to tell the actual amazing storylines of Batman. So you can start off with a Batman year one type thing where he's dealing with mostly the mob and then from there progresses and you have the escalation and the array of characters start to show up. You have a Dick Grayson character show up 
Um, maybe not as a 12 year old boy because that doesn't really work these days, but maybe he's an older high school. He's an 18 year old that's a world class athlete that joins him. And, you know, that you get to see their relationship form over time. You could do a storyline of Nightfall where there's a season like season five or six where Bane frees all of the people that he's arrested in all of the previous seasons. And he has to take all of them out in one season all at once. And at the end of it, like the the big conclusion is Bane breaks his back. And then the next season wouldn't feel like a terribly different show because even though his back is broken, Batman is still the great detective. And so the show keeps its pace and you've got a Robin character that can continue on the action of it. And likewise, you could see Dick Grayson turn into Nightwing. You could see the progression of things. Oh, I've always thought that. So kind of doesn't really answer your question the direction you took it. But um, I was really hoping they were going to do like just a killer Batman um, TV series. You, you think if they had the budget of a major network and this type of storytelling they're doing like with Daredevil, you would just have an incredible, incredible TV show. Um, but, you know, they put him in Batman v Superman and, well, you have your opinion on that. Ty Jensen asks, do you watch Arrow or Flash? Uh, real quick answer, yes, I watch Arrow and Flash. Watched both of, or I was waiting for both of them before they came out because I'd watched Smallville before, which had um, Green Arrow on it. So I was pumped about a Green Arrow TV series because there had been rumors for years. And I watched the 1990 Flash TV series when I was growing up. And so the idea of a new Flash series, I very much intrigued me. I also watched Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl. Very excited that they're all on the network together. If I had to rank all of them by their quality, goodness overall, I'd probably put Flash on top, Arrow next. Uh, then Supergirl, then Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow, I think, has a lot of potential. They're just It's just shaky as can be, and it's either awesome or it's awful very rarely anywhere in the middle. Pokehan asks, uh, I guess I need to ask a question. Will you be doing a Game of Thrones or Walking Dead episode discussions? No, because I don't currently watch either one of those shows. Um, I've at times tried to watch both of them. I've watched a good bit more Walking Dead than I've watched of Game of Thrones. Uh, both of them are just a little bit too much too hardcore for my phase of life right now. Both of them and episodes that I'd watched uh, right around when my second child was born involved pregnant women dying and babies getting killed. And when you've got a two-year-old and a pregnant wife, uh, that um, that doesn't go well. So they're just not shows that I watch right now. And you know, I can't imagine myself uh, starting to watch either one of them anytime in the near future. Tisha M. asks, what's your favorite movie genre? I'm going to go with action-adventure mixed with anything, uh, really. Uh, it, as long as there's some good action to it, if it's fun, if it's a drama, if it's sci-fi, if it's a Western, any of them kind of with that action vibe to them, it, it works for me. I'm a action type of guy. Next one from Tisha M. Rank the Batman movies. I'll put them in categories. I couldn't rank them all. Maybe I'll do a video someday doing that. But uh, to put them in categories... Uh, the best of the best would be Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. Great would be the Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Great but flawed would be like Batman and The Dark Knight Rises, which Batman has so much nostalgia for me. It hurts that I put it this low, but it's got some flaws and the Prince music is pretty ridiculous. Um, next category down, good at what they were aiming for. There have been some really weird interpretations of Batman. So, like, Batman Returns isn't really a Batman movie. It's a Tim Burton movie with a guy named Batman in it. So, for what it is, it's good. It's weird. Once again, a nostalgia film for me. Um, it hurts to put it down this low, but I can't say that I ever really want to watch it. Next one, Batman Forever. Joel Schumacher was out trying to make a weird campy, flashy lights Batman movie that when it came out, I liked it. Uh, I just can't say that that's held up into adult life. I almost never want to watch it. Next one would be Batman 67 from the old 60s Batman TV show. Um, once again, it's good at what it's trying to be. I watch it quite a bit right now because my kids like it. I don't ever really sit around wanting to watch that on my own. Last Couple on the list. Bad ideas from the beginning. I'm going to go with Batman and Robin, where Joel Schumacher's live action cartoon, except with bat butts, bat nipples, overt sexuality, themes about Alfred dying and legacy. I don't know what he was aiming for because it's so cartoony and childish while so overly sexualized in the weirdest ways possible. 
And while dealing with themes that kids don't resonate with, and the second one I'm going to put in that category, because it was released in theaters at least for a day, would be Batman the Killing Joke. This could have been one that easily would have moved up into the other categories, even if you just cut the first 30 minutes off of it, but because you don't, you have this unbelievably strangely made thing where it's two stories clumped together. The first one is a very just kind of throwaway, kind of weird story about Batman and Batgirl having a relationship and doing things that I don't want to think about the two of them doing. And then it's the killing joke on the the back end of it. Very odd, ill-conceived to just mash these two stories together. But that's what you get. Next one from Tisha M. Rank the Marvel movies. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to put a video out doing that, assuming I'm still making videos in a few months. Whenever Doctor Strange comes out, I'll do it with four, all 14 ranked to just give you a tease of where things are headed. The worst, I would say, would be Thor The Dark World and Iron Man 2. But I would say any Marvel movie is like a bowl of ice cream. Even a bad bowl of ice cream is still a bowl of ice cream. It's good. I'll enjoy it. Uh, as for my kind of top three in no particular order, at least for this list, would be Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers 1, and Iron Man 1. Um, and then of the specific fran uh, individual franchises within that, Captain America is by far the best. I really like the first film, and then the second two have just added on top of it. it they've done a great job with, with those movies. Last one from Tisha M. Will I be reviewing any non-action blockbuster movies? Yeah, if there's a demand, I will. Or if I have a specific angle I want to take on it. Um, I haven't really put anything like that off limits. I, I just kind of review things I've watched or that I'm excited about or that I'm interested in. And that leads into the direction of the videos that I've made. Um, I can't imagine any time in the near future I'll just be going to the theater seeing every movie that comes out and reviewing it, in which case you get all kinds of stuff that doesn't fit into my current scheme of things. That's just not, I'm not interested in doing that. Um, I could certainly see things like doing, a, I have in my list of ideas for future videos, Princess Bride is one that's in there, um, uh, how it's, it's both awesome and awful all at once, and uh, I know that people probably won't like that answer. Um, so, Yes, I will be doing other things as there's demand and as I'm interested. Agent P34 says, when did you start making YouTube videos? Well, if you look at my channel, I put, I believe, three videos up back in 2013, reviewing like Now You See Me, which I saw it in actually an early press screening, and then I did Star Trek uh, um, Into Darkness. So I reviewed like three movies back then in the first season of Arrow, and then I did about 10 reviews of just totally random assortment of things in 2014, like RoboCop and Three Days to Kill, and then the first few episodes of Gotham, and then I abandoned it for a couple years and picked it back up just six weeks ago. So how long have I been doing it? Uh, about three years. How long have I really been doing it, focusing on it, working on branding, community building? and caring about it, uh, that would be about six weeks. So this whole 100 subscribers is really in a period of about six weeks. Rich Reviews asks, how do you create your awesome thumbnails? Do you use Photoshop or something else? Yes, I use Photoshop. That's what I've been using since about 2002. It's what I used for the job I've had. Um, and anything else I use is just really frustrating for me because it doesn't give me the flexibility and freedom to do what I want to do. So I find myself just, just frustrated with it. Uh, as for some just guiding principles of how do I make them, I guess basic ideas is uh, I use my face, this face right here, as my brand. Um, so I don't have like a logo or anything like that. I intentionally tried to use myself, my name for all of this just because it keeps it simple. I didn't want to try and be clever. Uh, it's just my opinions on stuff. So Sean Chandler talks about and this is Sean Chandler. I try and make it visually interesting. Some of them, I've even gone back to some old videos that nobody's watched and tried to change out the thumbnail on some of them because it wasn't interesting enough. But something that just kind of catches your eye that looks right. I aim for simplicity over complexity. Uh, I don't want it to be just a bunch of noise, a bunch of moving stuff on it, and just something that's very clear that you see this face and you see what the video is. And so sometimes that can be graphically done. Sometimes I need a title. Sometimes I need the words on it. But ideally, if it's just this face and then a graphic right here, that would be a great, great um, thumbnail. And then always make sure that the text is very readable. And if you put text on it and if it's not easy to read when it's shrunk down itty bitty and that suggestion section, what's the point in doing it? And so then using a font that has large letters that are not too artistic or clever that they get difficult to read. Sometimes I'll put like a white bar behind it so it pops out. Sometimes I'll put a shadow or stroke around the whole thing so it just pops. 
And so that's the key thing, that you can see this face so you know it's me, so it's Brandon, and so that you can tell from the picture what the video is kind of like. And I'll try and use my face sometimes in the picture to communicate. If it's a review, do I like it? Do I dislike it? Am I disgusted? Am I frustrated? Uh, that's what I try to do. So as long as we're talking about kind of the technical side, how do I make my thumbnails, I thought I'll do real quick, just tell you what I use for all of my stuff. So for graphics, I use Photoshop. For video editing, I use Adobe Premiere. For my intro, which I programmed from scratch, not because I knew how, but because I used tutorials, I used After Effects. Like I designed that whole thing, or I didn't design it myself, but I made it myself in After Effects. And then for the music, I wrote my intro and outro music, and I did that in Logic Pro X. If you just want to take a look at my setup real quick, I'll just, real quick. So if we want to just switch views, this is what I'm actually looking at at this moment. I have a video camera on my BB-8 box, as well as three Star Wars boxes, a microphone that is right underneath the view of the camera. I record this into my laptop, into GarageBand, so that I can EQ it better. My lights aren't anything fancy. They're literally just can clamp lights from uh, uh, Home Depot, as you can see right here. As I turn around, this used to be my daughter's room, and so there is her dresser right over there. Doggy Bo walked in just a few minutes ago. He hides in the background. My green screen is literally just um, poster board right here that is tacked onto the wall. I have a backlight to um, fill out the green screen so it doesn't get as many shadows on it. There's a bunch of just, oh, here's my Darth Tater right here. Um, yeah. So that is what my setup, generally speaking, looks like. It's very simple. The only things that I went out and bought to start doing videos six weeks ago were this uh, poster board right here to be able to make a green screen and tacks to be able to poke it into the wall. Oh, and I think I brought light bulbs. There's a specific type of bulbs you want to use because uh, there's warm lights and there's cool lights and then there's a nice balanced in-between daylight light that simulates daylight. Those are the bulbs you want in your front lights. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel, getting us up to 100 subscribers. Hopefully this will be the only the first of these. I'll try and do more different benchmarks or if there's just a demand for me to keep answering questions, I'll keep answering questions. With all that said, if you have any more questions for me, leave them in the comment section section and maybe I'll make more of these on a regular basis. Likewise, if you're watching this for the first time and you like my opinions, this is probably the one where you get the best idea about me and my opinions on stuff and how I think about things because I'm answering all kinds of questions about a whole bunch of different subjects. If you like my talking, please click that subscribe button. Check out for more videos that I put out each week. I try to put out uh, an editorial like this on Mondays. I try to put out some kind of um, review on Wednesdays and then some other day of the week I'll put something out depending on what happens in the world of movie news and TV news. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I really do want to talk to you in the comment sections. I try very hard to respond to every comment so long as you're not a troll. Thank you for watching.